Okay, well, first of all, uh, let me thank uh, Robin and Amy for um, inviting me to this uh, exciting conference. Uh, I'm very happy to be part of it, especially hearing all the previous talks. I think uh, my talk uh, nicely um, uh, fits with the, with the first uh, topic of this morning, uh, the, the, the talks by uh, Robin and uh, uh, Denise and Michelle and... Um, Dia, because they talked about why uh, women sometimes don't back each other up and uh, how uh, negatively they are evaluated when they don't uh, work together. And I'm going to uh, continue on that topic and tell you a little bit about uh, what I have found in our work, uh, why sometimes uh, senior women uh, work against uh, the progress of their uh, female subordinates. Well, this... Um, this phenomenon is called, with a quite uh, derogatory term, uh, the Queen Bee uh, phenomenon. And it's something that I, together with my uh, collaborators, have worked on for the past, uh, past years. So this uh, line of work started with uh, work by one of my colleagues, Naomi Elmers, who did work on uh, female faculties, looking at whether uh, female faculties support their uh, PhD students. And actually what she found was that uh, especially older female faculty uh, reported um, higher masculine self-presentation. So when they were asked to present themselves, they reported very masculine uh, um, uh, characteristics like being very dedicated, being very agentic. Um, and also when they were asked to report on their perceptions of the career commitment of their uh, female graduate students and male graduate students, they reported a much larger gap than that these students reported themselves because male and female PhD students didn't report a career commitment gap. Um, but, uh, and also this um, stereotypically negative perception of the career commitment of their female graduate students was much larger than that uh, reported by um, male uh, faculty. So um, this uh, sprang, this, this um, motivated research into this Queen Bee uh, phenomenon. And over the years we have done a couple of studies showing different parts of this Queen Bee phenomenon. And uh, what we have found up to now is that the queen, uh, queen bee phenomenon is found among uh, senior women, mostly in very masculine organizations where they are, have a solo status or token status. Uh, part of it is that they uh, present themselves very masculinely, uh, that they distance themselves from other women psychologically, sometimes even physically, um, that they have a very stereotypical evaluation of their female subordinates, like I just showed you. They uh, rate the career commitment of their female subordinates as much lower than the career, career commitment of their male subordinates. Uh, they also distance themselves from this, so say, I am much more committed than, my, than, than the average woman in this company. And uh, also, they, uh, we have found that they report quite modern sexist views, so denying that uh, gender discrimination is still an issue, uh, and also uh, being quite negative about affirmative action policies. So uh, it seems that in this way, women um, can actually harm the, the opportunities for other women in their own company. So the danger of the Queen Bee phenomenon is that uh, criticism, for example, criticism of women by other women is much more credible. Uh, when you, as, um, as an advocate of your group, say something about, th say something about that group, um, it's much more likely to be believed. Also, it's less likely to be detected as sexist because we seem to assume that women cannot be sexist. If a woman says something negative about another woman, it's, it's not because of sexism. She's probably uh, more able to, to judge. Um, but also that um, Queen Bee phenomenon is actually an example of blaming the victim. Uh, so this is uh, something that uh, Leah also claims in her uh, article, uh, because bl uh, the, this Queen Bee phenomenon actually serves to, to suggest that it's not men but women who hold each other back. And therefore it's quite, I think, quite a popular uh, topic in the media. Uh, and also blaming women for, for holding each other back uh, allows us to see the system, the meritocratic system, as just. Another uh, problem with uh, Queen Bee behavior is that when senior women become more masculine, distance themselves more from other women, they are less likely to be seen as role models. So it, it's, it seems like a very positive thing when um, uh, women uh, do climb the organizational ladder, but when they do so with Queen Bee behavior, they are less likely to be um, inspiration for their uh, female subordinates. 
So uh, in the popular media, you see, and this is something which has also been discussed uh, this morning, um, this, uh, f this queen bee phenomenon is often described as, as something that is typically female. Uh, this is something that fits the, the female stereotype of uh, relationships between women. They are catty, uh, they, uh, they hold each other back, and this is, well, it's typical female behavior. So uh, some of the research on the queen bee phenomenon has focused on who are these women? What kind of women, uh, what kind of woman are you when you uh, show this kind of behavior? And some research has shown, uh, might it be, in, uh, this research has focused, for example, on are these women with low self-esteem or are these women with very traditional uh, gender views? But um, what we wanted to do in our research is explain the queen bee phenomenon not with this inter uh, inter-individual approach, but actually um, uh, showing that it's something about the environment in which women uh, achieve their uh, success. So what I would like to do in this talk is, uh, and I hope uh, I, I will have enough time to do this, is make these three different points. Uh, first of all, I will uh, discuss some research we've done where we show that uh, queen bee behavior is actually uh, a result of the uh, gender bias that women uh, experience in their career. Second of all, I'm going to show you some uh, new uh, data, or I'm going to talk about some new data where we show that this queen bee-like response is not specific to women, but that you find a similar response among other minority groups. And finally, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about some new research where we show that uh, queen bee behavior is also quite likely to be rewarded, so that it's not so strange that it still occurs because it's something that yields uh, women uh, uh, that, that leads to success. So to start uh, with this uh, first point, uh, we wanted to show that queen bee behavior is a response to an environment that is very masculine, that uh, is negative about women. And um, we did this from the perspective of, uh, of a social psychological theory called social identity theory. Uh, Jen also discussed it a little bit already. And uh, what uh, this theory states is that when well, in this case, women are confronted with discrimination of their group, negative stereotypes about the ability of women to be leaders, and they uh, experience a threat to their identity. Uh, this can result in lower self-esteem, it, it triggers all kinds of coping responses. And when we look at these coping responses, there you can make a distinction between uh, collective responses and uh, individual responses. So a collective response would be to protest, to try to strive for better in, in, uh, in, um, better outcomes of the in-group. For example, when you're a female leader, you can uh, join mentoring uh, groups, you can mentor other women to try to achieve the same thing as you have achieved. That would be a collective response. However, in this social identi identity work, uh, what is often find, found is that people also uh, pursue uh, individual re responses. So uh, this is uh, trying to achieve individual outcomes, not necessarily uh, at the um, um, uh, at, at the expense of the group, but often these, um, these uh, coping strategies do come at the expense of the group. For example, when you strive for better personal outcomes, uh, when you distance yourself from the group that is negatively stereotyped in order to be perceived more positively yourself, uh, and when you try to assimilate into the outgroup, trying to become more like men, for example, by showing your masculine um, uh, characteristics in an attempt to show um, these uh, leadership uh, stereotypes about women don't apply to me. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, where the Queen Bee response uh, fits in. Um, so, what we uh, predicted was that uh, Queen Bee responses are actually a response to the social identity threat that women experience when they are in a work setting that devalues uh, their gender. And uh, this is because, uh, first of all, what is an important predictor there is that when you look at the research on social identity, um, m group members who have a relatively low identification tend to pursue individual mobility responses, and group members who have a relatively high identification with their group tend to show uh, collective responses. So uh, we predicted that um, the um, uh, queen bee behavior would be a response to a threatening work setting, uh, but only a response of, of women who didn't identify themselves that much with their gender, at work at least. So uh, that was our hypothesis. Queen bee behavior is a response of women with low gender identification 
who are confronted with gender bias. And we did a couple of studies um, into uh, this hypothesis, and I'm going to show you one uh, today. And this was a study we did uh, among the police force in the Netherlands, among senior women in that police force. And of course, the police force is a typical, very masculine uh, organization. Um, and uh, we, this hypothesis, we also tested it in correlational studies, but what I'm going to show here is an experimental study where we primed women with the presence or the absence of gender discrimination in, in order to see whether that would trigger uh, Queen Bee responses. So first of all, uh, we measured amongst uh, 63 senior women in three police organizations, we measured their gender identification at work, so with questions like, at work, I identify with other women, and then we manipulated gender bias, um, either by asking them to um, describe a work situation in which they felt that, they, uh, that the fact that they were a woman negatively influenced their outcomes, or in which they had felt discriminated against or had heard sexist comments. So this was a very broad uh, description in order to um, have them uh, describe all sorts of situations. And in the absent condition, we uh, tried to um, manipulate a situation that would really offset social identity threats. So in this condition, we asked them to describe a work situation in which they had felt that their gender identity had not been an issue and in which their person personal qualities had been acknowledged. So this was the way in which we um, triggered or offset um, gender bias primes uh, social identity threats. Uh, what we found is uh, we measured Queen Bee behavior with several indicators. First of all, we asked them to describe their leadership styles with uh, communal and agentic uh, traits. Uh, so Queen Bee behavior would be a very masculine uh, leadership style. Um, we asked them how different do you think you are from other women in this organization. And we also asked them, is there uh, still discrimination in the police force? What we found was indeed what we expected. This kind of Queen Bee uh, responses were found mostly among uh, women with relatively low gender identification at work, who had subsequent, subsequently been primed with uh, gender bias. So in the gender bias condition, there was a significant uh, difference between women with low and high uh, gender identification, low identifiers showing more Queen Bee responses than high identifiers. But this was not the case in the control condition. So in the control condition, there was no difference between uh, low and high identifiers. Uh, also, we found some indications that high identifiers indeed cope with this threat in a different way, because high identifiers in response to this uh, gender bias prime showed a higher willingness to mentor other women in their organization, and also they reported uh, that uh, affirmative action was much more necessary in their uh, organization. So these are examples of um, collective responses that low identifiers did not show. So. Um, we did more studies into this, but I hope that this data has uh, convinced you, has given you some uh, evidence for the first uh, point I would like to make, and that is that experiencing gender bias results in increased queen bee behavior. But then we uh, went on to uh, think about this, and we thought if this really is the case, if it is not something about women, but about the situation they are in, and the, and the fact that this, this threatens their social identity, we should be able to find similar responses in other uh, minority groups, like ethnic minority groups in work settings in which um, they are a minority. So uh, the, the second point uh, we wanted to make is that queen bee-like responses are not specific to women. So how did we do this? Uh, actually, we uh, performed a, a sort of a replication of this study I just showed you. But in this case, we uh, did the same study, but with um, another uh, minority group, and that was um, Hindustani Surinamese uh, people in the Netherlands, which is an ethnic minority group. And when you look at the literature, there are also instances of, uh, of, of uh, queen bee-like responses among other groups. Uh, for example, there's research on acting white, which is actually uh, what um, African Americans are called when they uh, have high academic performance. So in this case, it's not necessarily something they do, but it's something that they are being punished for. Uh, but also in uh, previous work, it has been found that in, um, when uh, African Americans are confronted with negative stereotypes about the intellectual ability of their group, they sometimes um, tend to distance themselves from these negative stereotypes, and especially 
uh, less highly identified uh, African Americans tend to describe themselves less stereotypically in that case. So that's also an indication that the same process is occurring there. And finally, uh, there is uh, acting straight uh, behavior. So uh, homosexual men who uh, present themselves less feminine and more masculine in response to a context that uh, is not so positive about uh, homosexuality. Actually, we are currently conducting a study into homosexual men, but I'm now going to show you what's happened, what we found for uh, Surinamese Hindustani employees, which is a group in the Netherlands that um, uh, is quite uh, negatively stereotyped. Uh, so again, we asked them to report their uh, ethnic identification at work. So how strongly are you identified with other Hindustani people uh, at work? And we uh, manipulated the ethnic bias, whether it was present or absent. So it was very similar to the first study, but now it was ethnic bias rather than gender bias. Uh, we first performed a pilot study to see what this uh, acting Dutch would mean for, for Hindustani uh, Dutch. Uh, so we asked them, uh, in a pilot study, we asked them about what they thought was stereotypically a Dutch behavior uh, at work. And they, came, uh, and they came with things like being very down to earth, being very direct in your communication, and being very punctual, which is uh, maybe not even something Dutch, but it's something that Hindustanis don't uh, think of uh, for their own group. Uh, and secondly, we also measured their, the effect they reported uh, about uh, their in-group, uh, positive and negative effect, ex expecting that when you distance yourself from your ethnic group, you become less positive about this group. And again, this acting Dutch uh, behavior, I don't really like the term, but it's, it makes it clear what I, what I mean, um, was found mostly among Hindustani employees with relatively low ethnic identification at work and uh, in the ethnic bias condition, so who were just uh, asked to think about situations where ha they had faced discrimination. So in that condition, you found a significant difference between uh, ethnic, minor mm. ethnic uh, minorities who reported high ethnic identification and low ident ethnic identification. But in the control condition, so in the absence of this ethnic bias prime, there was no difference, uh, and uh, acting Dutch was much lower. Here again, we also found a different coping response for high identifiers. Uh, we measured social creativity, which is also a collective coping response, and high identifiers showed a strong in-group bias on a dimension that is that in the pilot was mentioned as a typical dimension for Hindustani, which is diligence, work diligence. So in response to ethnic bias, high identifiers were uh, showed much more um, in-group bias than in the control condition, uh, sh um, which suggests that they cope in a collective rather than an individual way. So, with this, uh, with this study, uh, we uh, hope to show that queen bee-like responses are not specific to women, but that when you look at other minority groups in situations where their identity is threatened, among those groups, members who don't care that much for their group or who, or who don't um, uh, define themselves according to that group at work, they tend to distance themselves from that group when they are confronted with the negative stereotypes about that group. So queen bee-like responses are not specific to women but are specific to members of group, who, groups who uh, suffer threats to their identity. Um, finally, uh, we are now looking into um, uh, whether queen bee behavior is rewarded, because if it still exists, it might be because when you, uh, when you uh, present yourself as, as a queen bee, that actually has some uh, benefits uh, for your career success. So in the final, uh, final study I will present, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about a, st a study where we uh, looked at how men respond to queen bees. Um, and in this case, we asked uh, male participants to um, evaluate candidates who were either typically qu like queen bees or more feminist women or men to see whether queen bees actually are selected more often. So um, do successful women turn into queen bees or are queen bees also more successful? Well, there is reason to suspect that queen bees are not so successful because 
uh, they're evaluated very negatively. Uh, women who, who uh, present themselves in an agentic way are not accepted, and also women who are negative about other women, that is not very acceptable either. So you would suspect that if you, uh, if you, perf if you perform Queen Bee behaviors at work, that that's the end of your career. But on the other hand, you can also say Queen Bees protect the status quo. Um, they um, um, protect a system where men have high status, um, they, and especially when men might feel that their status is threatened because more and more women come into an organization, selecting a queen bee for a position of power rather than a man or rather than a woman with more femi feminist, uh, feministic ideas can actually be very smart. Um, so what we wanted to see is uh, do men prefer queen bees and does it matter uh, what the organizational context is like. So we did uh, three studies, uh, and I'm going, just going to give you an overview. So we gave a male participants a scenario in which they uh, were uh, asked to imagine that they were a member of a management team in a large, successful insurance company. Uh, and because the company was so successful, they had to select a new team member into this management team. Um, and we had... Um, we also gave some information about the gender distribution of the management team. So in the relative equality, relative equality, we said it's a team with four men and two women. So uh, it's not equal, but there are, uh, uh, women are not as much in the minority. In the unequal condition, we said this team com is completely consisting of men, among uh, of which you are one. And then we also had a, a condition in which the salience of gender equality, inequality, was a little bit higher, where we said, uh, lately the amount of men in the management has been criticized as there are no women, while there are many women on lower organizational levels. So we wanted to see whether making this um, uh, gender distribution more salient and criticizing, in effect, the men for that there were no women in, on the team might make them even more likely to uh, select a queen bee. Well, uh, then we uh, asked them to select, a uh, to select a candidate. In the several studies, we had different candidates, but this is one example. They could choose between a man who presented himself with a quite masculine self-description and who was neutral uh, in his opinion about affirmative action. Uh, a queen bee who also had a masculine self-description, uh, similar to the male candidate, but who was very negative about the need for affirmative action. And finally, a, a feminist woman who had a feminine self-description and who said, yeah, if I, if I get this position, I think it's important that we uh, have more affirmative action in this company. We also did other studies where we um, uh, manipulated uh, gender of the candidate and the message of the candidate separately to see whether it was the gender or the message. I think the, the message, uh, the data is, is similar. So, um, okay, first of all, what we found is that when we made the gender inequality more salient, men did pick up on that. So they said, um, uh, d they, they, they realized uh, gender, that there was gender inequality, and they also were more, felt more guilty about it, and they also said, yeah, the more salient it was, the more necessary they thought something should change. So that seems very uh, positive. But in all, can, all, all conditions, um, uh, the Queen Bee was the most popular candidate. So regardless of the other candidates, uh, the Queen Bee was often the most, was always the most uh, popular candidate. Um, wh when we had a man, a male candidate, who was equally negative about affirmative action policies as the Queen Bee was, the male was not selected. Because, yeah, that's, that's clear. A man who says that, that's very negative. So he was, um, especially when gender outcomes were unequal in those conditions, the male candidates were l selected less when they uh, uh, were anti-affirmative action attitudes, but the queen bees were not. So um, they, um, they could say whatever they wanted. Um, and this was, even though participants rated the queen bees as very unlikable, uh, and, and, and reported that they realized that she was not going to do a lot for other women. So it's not that um, they were not aware of this, uh, but uh, still the Queen Bee was the most popular candidate. Uh, finally, we also did a study where, because we had the opportunity, where we did the same study with uh, female participants to see, well, do women pick up on this and, and what do they think of the Queen Bee? And they liked her even more. So when, especially when, uh, when uh, there was inequality, when there was clear inequality, uh, because there, there was an effect of condition, 
we found that women uh, thought, okay, if the situation is like this, we need this type of uh, woman to, uh, to go into the management team. And it's, uh, at the moment, it's unclear whether that is because they expected her to fit in better or, to, or, better, or because they didn't believe that she wasn't actually going to change anything. But in any case, uttering these kinds of statements uh, seems to pay off. So finally, uh, another, uh, it seems that uh, to wrap up, um, explanations for the queen bee phenomenon, uh, first of all, uh, women respond in this way, especially in situations when there's a lot of gender bias. It's not something about women. Uh, other minority groups uh, respond in the same way. And uh, actually, in a way, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something that uh, is rewarded because uh, queen, bee, queen bees are selected uh, more easily than women with more, uh, w with more feministic uh, views. So uh, that was what I wanted to say today. Uh, here are my collaborators at Leiden University. And uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>